Hello, everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I wanted to talk about a super important topic. I even put on my funny hat for this topic. Um, it completely uh, took me by surprise here how important uh, a concept is that I missed in my so-called detailed discussion on the Congo jungle. Um, and I basically, I wanted to make it all really quick here that the door of the jungle is super important. Um, I'm super thankful for some help here. Um, uh, one of my friends just texted me um, and I just wanted to thank uh, them personally for trying to help me out in understanding what's going on. Um, I really have a lot to learn here and I'm very thankful for uh, some help. Um, but uh, what I'm realizing here is that there is some very missing important information that we wanted to discuss here. So this is going to be a extraordinarily important discussion because it's basically the door to the jungle. So there's the center of the jungle uh, and then there's the doors of the jungle, right? Um, and um, we basically have a front door and a back door um, for practical purposes. There's also... Um, uh, some discussion here. So again, I wanted to really thank uh, some people that I've talked with even for a matter of minutes or even uh, very briefly and uh, that live uh, primarily on the East African side and I've also talked with uh, some people on the West African side. Um, and it has been unbelievably helpful to talk uh, with people about what is going on and I for sure have a tremendous amount of things that I really need to learn here. Um, but I wanna just show you really quickly what was going on. So we're gonna look at the forest map, but how this all started. So, um, you know, I, this is really uh, complicated to talk about, but basically the Congo jungle isn't maybe what you think. Uh, typically you might think of, well, a jungle is just one big continuous space. Um, but as you can see from this map, there's actually discontinuous parts and even, in terms of the climate, um, very weird areas um, where there's very limited access um, between one part of the jungle and the other, as well as in West Africa here and East Africa. So we're gonna try to look at everything, uh, but this is definitely needs a huge amount of detailed discussion. So what I wanted to start with is this little point right here and just explain to you how important certain details are. Right. So this little area right here of the jungle may be extremely important because it's essentially the only way that certain types of animals depend on moving from one side of the jungle to the other. Here there's a vast gap. Um, however, um, you can also see it in here there's a little climate difference here that actually is similar to the deep part of the jungle. Um, so basically what we're going to look at here is the door of the jungle. Um, so how would we think about that? Um, so when you look at a population map, basically what you see is that West Africa is almost fully populated as well as the back door of the jungle with uh, Ethiopia being up here um, and actually Sudan being a very important part as well. Um, and then you got Rwanda here in Uganda and as well as uh, uh, down here further south on the east side in Tasmania and this is Angola um, so basically what happened here is that I was looking for a way to essentially um, try to get people out of the jungle um, because it's really for animals um, and that's a huge debate um, in general but as you can see the people are kind of moving in here and getting into the jungle but what really kind of got me thinking um, was the second tallest mountain in all of Africa now if you're familiar with Mount Kilimanjaro it's basically um, down here in Kenya um, I believe it's in right in there uh, in this mountain region right here so or maybe even up in there so uh, but the second tallest mountain is actually in West Africa um, it's in Bua and it's right here so this turns out to be a very important doorway because both humans and people um, don't really want to walk up a huge mountain that's many thousands of feet and just to get to the other side. So here you can see there's kind of a flat area in the center of the jungle, which is basically swamp. 
um, and these two lakes are very vital. Now, um, so what it occurred to me is that this door is tiny. There's this tiny little passageway here, and the people are actually in Cameroon live on either side of this jungle. On one side, we have Nigeria, and on the other side, we have Cameroon, and it makes some little passageways vital for both humans, road traffic, as well as wildlife. So that becomes an extremely important point and i just wanted to make absolutely sure that everybody was on the same page because i did not discuss how important that little region is right there in my discussion i did discuss this but again i didn't maybe even emphasize how important a tiny this is only um kilometers so we're talking about a few miles maybe even one mile um region here that's a you can walk across that in like you know 10 you know you can run across it in maybe five minutes or so right so maybe 10 minutes right so we're talking a very small area here and i'm not even explaining it well enough so i'm really sorry so but again i wanted to really thank the people that are actually in this region for really caring passionately um, I watched just some amazing videos of people taking care of animals, particularly in East Africa. Um, and uh, basically, really, we need to step up the game here in West Africa. And I don't mean to say that word. But basically, what I was looking at here is also some alternatives. So what happens here is that the deforestation is almost entirely been taken out of Ethiopia and all of this this area region here and then pretty much all of West Africa has been deforested um, and you can now see that um, Uganda is almost completely deforested Rwanda here and even going into the back door of the jungle I don't really want to talk about this too much I will try to talk about it as a separate discussion here um, but unfortunately there's a lot to talk about in the details here so I'm going to zoom in so what this is how I wanted to propose this to everybody. So there's a couple different problems here. Um, I was completely surprised to find that monkeys and perhaps animals, all animals, do not cross rivers. There's many types of animals that never cross a river. So it is actually very difficult um, to get around the jungle um, more than you'd think if you're an animal. Um, so because you're basically avoiding population, vast amounts of population, I mean, we're talking about a billion people here. You're, and these are, you know, just a lot of people. So this city, Dawala, um, what we're seeing here is the Delta region as well. So um, what I wanted to kind of explain here is that this Delta region, um, if you're not familiar with uh, forest preservation internationally, the mangroves are a very hot topic um, in forestry. Um, and it actually has to do with deltas. Uh, in the United States, that's mangroves happen in Florida as well as in Louisiana. And actually, there are some of the most beautiful trees you can possibly imagine. Um, and also, it, it's like a very cool area for fish to swim around. The roots get into the water and then the tree actually goes above the water. So mangroves are very vital um and even during hurricane seasons a lot of people in the caribbean will connect their boats to a mangrove tree because it's so hard to anchor um other than with the mangroves so again i wanted to really thank my friends here as well as the howling dog next door which is not howling very much he was howling earlier and they took him away for some reason that's terrible he was trying to get me to really talk about this and the breeze is picking up here in the conversation as well but this is no funny matter about the doorway here right we have major deforestation here in west africa um as well as an unbelievable it's, it's actually this small area here uh, it's actually a huge area many thousands of miles um but the actual critical deforestation is actually in the back door of the jungle, which is right along here in the Congo. So, um, <coughs> and you can obviously see deep in the jungle, there's actually significant amount of deforestation, um, which is a very important topic that definitely I'd love to 
look into even more detail. But what I want you to do is look at these geological plates <clears throat> and rethink about the doorway to the jungle. This also kind of blew my mind um, when I started to think about how the geology actually starts to change that door of the jungle here. Um, and you can see the soil um, actually has a very um, unique, here's the mangrove, primary mangrove area. This does not show up all around the world, this bright blue area. It is actually extremely vital habitat for those mangroves um, that I was talking about. So you can see as I zoom in that there's definitely some soil differences here in West Africa and then it basically becomes very, um, uh, great unbelievably good soil there and you can see there's a variety of soils on this side now that's not to say um, that a variety of soil is bad it's actually excellent to have a lot of different kinds of soil because then you have different types of animals um, so again I wanted to look at this geology image to show you this door of how just unbelievable this front door is so you can see there's almost like a u-shaped or even, um, you know, that kind of converges. So West Africa pulls in through here, and then there's all this um, very strange geology on the front end of the jungle, as well as the back end of the jungle. If you're not familiar with the Congo, the Congo River, it is the second most, and it is a huge, it is the deepest river on earth. And I, I think it's so deep that no one has almost ever explored the base of the Congo because it's it's like uh, as deep as the ocean almost in in some places and um, so uh, and there's just really strange animals apparently that live deep in that uh, Congo jungle so um, but the point that I was trying to make is that this geology actually created an uplift here of a little bit um, that makes it impossible to navigate a boat up the Congo jungle that has saved the Congo jungle significantly you can kind of see the outline here of the river and I have a special specific map here that I wanted to go into detail and I'm really sorry if I'm talking about this a little bit fast it's just there's it's vital to talk about this discussion so I wanted to show you two different maps this is the overall water map but I included the basin map on this um, so it's similar to the geological map, and I'm going to turn it off for a second. So a basin is actually the region that water is kind of draining from. So the mountain, the mountain range is kind of, or the, it may go up and then down. So the lowest level would be in the center of the basin, and the highest level would be in terms of uh, altitude, uh, right? So there's actually some weird stuff here that you might not anticipate in terms of the region and it actually looks like the country border and that's actually how the real country is perhaps defined so as you look at this um, a lot of animals may um, stay within a certain basin region so as you can see this could redefine how you think about the doorway to the jungle because this basin is an entirely different basin than the congo basin as well as this basin and you can see this one actually heads out to the ocean here and it's actually so the animals may actually follow a different pathway in terms of things um, but the truth is that humans and animals probably follow the same types of pathways um in general at least uh the mammals right the fish are going to follow the rivers for sure so here i added the rivers and you can start to see that this here is one possible entrance to the jungle and you can see it's just a huge amount of details here so in general um you know animals like i was mentioning some of them do not even cross the river so there's all these microscopic doorways into different parts of west africa and again we haven't really discussed east africa in this perspective but if you're really struggling with the complexity of it you can just look at this map and start to see some of the details here so also you can see there's many different front doors here right it may be that the animals and the humans have basically populated the coast and if you look at this map you can basically see that the entire coast all the major cities are highlighted here but it actually is very densely populated much more than you might think
So let's zoom in at what kind of caused some interesting discussion for me personally. So this area here, there's a couple different front doors, right? Um, so it's not as simple as you may think. Um, this particular region right here is actually a very interesting uh, possible alternative to the main Congo River jungle heading out there, right? So there's actually a, a separate delta here. Now, Nigeria has completely um, populated this region, right? This mangrove region all in here. Um, and basically, uh, it's likely that this is a higher floodplain, so it's, it hasn't been populated yet. But you can see it definitely is the one of the most populated regions in all of Africa. Um, but the point that I'm trying to make here, excuse me, I lost my map. Sorry about this. Um, is that this is basically Cameroon um, on this side here, but there's actually a separate entrance right in here and then further down so it actually takes the river map a little bit but and you can see gabon here is this Equatorial of guinea so there's several different countries um right in here as well as the congo and the democratic republic of congo and then angola so the other concept in the doorway to the jungle is looking at the rain maps and i wanted to emphasize that it's definitely not what you think right so you can see that actually the west african trunk gets more rain than the congo itself this is the congo jungle and yet these portions here so the doorway actually needs to be rethought about um in terms of west africa you see how extraordinarily dry east africa is right at least uh during this month of the year which i believe is August, yeah. So um, I put another map here um, to show you the opposite side of the year, which is March. Um, and you can see that basically now East Africa is getting some of that rain. So now you can start talking about a new doorway, um, sometimes avoiding the rain and sometimes using the rain. So it's not as simple as you may think, but you can see um, how these different ways uh, can matter quite significantly in terms of the rain. And this is not a joke in terms of rain. We're talking about a full meter of rain. Um, that's, you know, as tall, you know, almost as tall as me, um, in one month of rain. So that's a huge amount of rain. Um, one of the things that I've been looking at carefully is farming, um, overall in West Africa and East Africa and how that may be related to the doorways of the jungle. So if you haven't seen this map already, it's a global agreement on cropland. Um, and you can basically see, um, I want to zoom in here and basically start to look at West Africa and you can basically see it's almost completely farmed. So this is actually becoming, um, now we know that if there's farmland there, it's probably also a possible doorway to the jungle. Um, for animals as well um, because if people are eating that food human um, animals can probably eat that food too so some of this is because of the floodplain um, and if you look at the soil map you can basically start to see um, that floodplain right there and that's why they're not farming there um, necessarily um, sorry I'm getting lost with so many different images here So again, I just wanted to thank everyone here that's been studying this uh, jungle aspects of where the doorway of the jungle is and how critical that is to understand. So basically um, using the doorway, it's like, you know, it's like going to someone's house, the jungle, and just like breaking in versus like actually being polite and careful about how you enter a place. Um, and actually, um, how have we really thought about that? Um, some of these regions, particularly in here, and you can see the complexity um, on all these rivers. So it's not anywhere near as how I'm making it out to be as a simple front door or back door, but um, you can definitely see um, this watchful eye here, um, basically in Uganda, uh, Lake Victoria, as well as the Great Lakes of West or East Africa. So um, let's look at this last uh, image here so you can see uh, essentially the climate. So 
climate is nice because it kind of um, summarizes some things um, well. Um, but what we are trying to do is basically get a lot of the population um, out of the jungle and even move to a lighter green area where their farming is still very good. The United States basically farms in lands similar to this region um, just south of the jungle. Um, for example, in uh, Georgia and the southeast, just north of Florida, um, this would maybe be kind of similar to some of that. Um, not at all, but kind of similar. Um, but anyway, the point being is that um, the soil maps um, can tell us, you can see there's still great soil down here below uh, the jungle that we could definitely um, consider farming in where we don't necessarily have to work directly in the jungle. Making this city, Angola, extremely important to uh, reevaluating. And basically what I was proposing is actually restructuring all of West African farming um, and rethinking about that down in Angola. Um, the problem with that, though, is that people start to get greedy and actually want to go right into the jungle because it's actually easier to get into the jungle uh, per potentially uh, from the south side of the jungle um, because it's flatter and the climate is more consistent. Um, so you're kind of forgetting um, that you're even entering the jungle, whereas in West Africa there was that huge gap um, that we saw. So in general, um, there's still some hope to try to regain this as wildlife regions as well as here. And what I was basically proposing is removing the farming from these regions and basically redoing that down here in Angola um, so that we don't um, primarily keep maybe these for tourist locations, a few major cities um, and things. But Obviously, Nigeria has definitely not done that. Um, if you look at the population here in Nigeria, you can see this is not the case at all. There's huge amounts of population here, whereas down here in Luunda, they have done a smart thing. They have basically done high levels of population right along the ocean front, um, meaning that it could be a very good alternative to Lagos even. Lagos is like an all-star city in Africa. Um, and I wanted to look carefully at Lagos in a moment, but a lot of people consider that the fastest growing place in Africa. But I think there's really a misunderstanding when people say how important a Lagos is. Um, actually, what's going on is that the population is happening in the Delta region um, more so than in Lagos. So a lot of people say this is the fastest growing part of Africa, but it actually may be the jungle, which is actually right located on this delta um, and Accra actually turns out to be a much safer alternative um, so a lot of people here um, are fighting for resources with the jungle itself and the wildlife whereas they could live in Accra or even further west um, on away from the jungle so um, it could be fun to live next to the jungle yes that is maybe true um, however um, you can see um, it's just um, on the deforestation map, which I'll go back to in a second, uh, you can see it's basically very questionable in Cameroon. And what they probably could do is remove all of the, this forestry industry from all of these regions and shift that down to Angola. The problem that I mentioned again uh, is that the doorway on the south side, you can see there's actually a high plateau. You're actually going downhill. That means if you start doing something um, in here, it's basically easy to get into the jungle. So that's the catch of why it actually is wise to to work in West Africa because this mountain range essentially prevents people from hopping over into the jungle directly. Um, but as you can see, the people on the... I'm really sorry about this map. I lost it. Uh, let me see if I can find it again here. Uh, yes, yeah, so as you can see, the farming is actually shifting around that mountain range and actually diving right directly into the jungle, potentially um, through uh, Cameroon and Central African Republic. And you can see the Central African Republic, but they need food in the Central African Republic. So how to get that shifted is not necessarily a simple thing. So even what I'm suggesting may be a very bad idea because obviously it could be easier to get into the jungle if there isn't very strong rules in Angola saying, hey, once you get close to this side, forget it in terms of farming and even living there. Um, this is for animals and wildlife. And Zambia also 
And actually, that's what happened here is that the Democratic Republic of Congo is basically the main part of the jungle there. But it's not as simple as you might think because of the climate map. So anyway, again, I really need people's help on this project. And there was a friend of mine that just texted me and they actually live in this region and they can help significantly um, with the wildlife in these regions. Um, my friend uh, actually lives uh, over here in Uganda area uh, or Kenya area. Um, but many of the other people that I'm talking with live right in this region, which actually um, very cool friends uh, live right over here. Um, and basically they are very much learning how to work in the jungle because this is the same climate as you can see, maybe not as serious as right in here but um obviously west africans so it's almost a training ground to work of how to live and work and survive in the jungle so unfortunately people may absolutely love living around the beach here um and you can see um that actually turns into eventually uh, a doorway here so uh i am actually very hungry right now i have not eaten any breakfast or lunch um and i just jumped into this conversation because i thought about it last night and i've been thinking about it today essentially preserving these doorways and looking at them very carefully if we do the doorways correctly then we can do the jungle correctly if we kind of think about it very cautiously so this back end here is actually becoming a more of a doorway than here um for some reason in terms of farming so we don't think about this back end here on the front door so this front door is kind of coming through here and through here and actually it, we have many opportunities to do this right this is the sad thing about this right so although we are starting to get a lot of population in through here all of this region can be used as a saying no 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 don't go into the jungle and farm uh it's not for you it actually starts right down here which is the actual congo river and you can't even see it in that map and i'm really sorry about this all these maps here but you can see there's many different lessons to be learned before you actually get into the main congo and actually it's not even true what i'm saying because the climate actually climbs over those mountains here and gives us a little sliver here um, and there's a lesson here definitely in uganda to think about um, for my friends in uganda um, who are considering um even checking out some of these great lakes so um give me one minute i'm gonna try to heat up some food i am starving right now and i hope you have some food too i um but i really wanted to talk about this topic because it's desperate to think about the food for the animals as well as their habitat um, try and preserve things. Uh, so I wanted to remind everyone, my friend just stopped over and he's looking for housing. He's desperate um, for finding housing. He's having to sleep outdoors uh, in a car or even a trailer right now. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's actually a lot of people even in my town that even sleep on the street sometimes or even near the rivers and different things like that. So housing is critical right now um, for everyone, including in West Africa, right? We have huge amounts of population uh, growth and many other things. Um, but what I just mentioned to him, if you didn't hear what we were talking about, um, man, try to find a place near downtown. And the problem is it gets very expensive in many of the cities. Um, but essentially what's going on is that people are moving outside of town, uh, farming and living further and further out. And it basically, uh, yeah, so kind of a scary problem to think about. But you can see down here in southern um, part, uh, you know, this is a very large city. It's one of the largest cities in all of Africa. It's actually two different cities, Brazzaville and Kanish. I can't pronounce it right. Sorry, guys. Um, but you can see there's just huge amounts of details in the population i wish i could get an actual there, there is a way to get satellite map uh with population uh from the fao and I, there's just so many things here but um what i wanted to emphasize here is that um i we need help here right my friend is struggling um i have many different friends needing food every single day uh texting me or uh, calling me about what their problem is in terms of things um so Essentially, what I wanted to emphasize is that the farming situation is very critical. If we do this correctly in Angola, in Angola um, 
you could actually live right along the beach here um, and have the farms back in here. The part of the problem uh, I talked with, uh, sorry, Mike, I, I need to stop talking on this camera as soon as possible, and I'm really sorry about this, but I talked, I went to the farmer's market yesterday uh, and talked with, I bought uh, some fruit. Um, let me go get it really quick. Hold on a second. Well, here's 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 my apple. I saved the seeds from it. Uh, I'll have a little bite of it right now. Um, but I talked with the person. I said, hey, um, what's it like living on your farm? And they said, "Well, we don't live, we don't go to the farm too much anymore. We just go to our backyard, and that's where we do it. And they they are one of the largest producers of fruit at the farmers market. Um, they're the and I, I was really scared because I was like, man, they're hiring it out now to other people. They owned the farm. It was uh, I think their family, um, and they're essentially hiring it out to other co workers that work on the farm. They don't even visit the farm anymore." That really scared me, but at the same time, it reminded me that the real farming is sometimes done in our backyards. So you kind of have to be, uh, if you've tried to grow in something before, you got to be there every single day. Otherwise, something definitely could go wrong. Um, and even several times a day, you might need to water uh, and check on your plants. So basically, farming is a back yard thing so that's one of the scary things about this as we look at the solution here um because on the let me go to the soil map here so all this soil is good um and in fact the bright blue stuff is uh, very good but what i wanted to say from that little story is that it kind of scared me because man this is the most one of the most important i live in one of them uh more important towns because of the university system is here and yet, look at what happened to the farmers. They're abandoning their own property and just essentially farming in their backyard. They grow maybe an apple tree, a pear tree, some other trees in their backyard. I'm trying to grow some things in my own house right now. But essentially what I'm saying is that uh, you can get hundreds of pounds uh, of food from even one apple tree. Um, you know, so the point is that there is a lot of stuff that we could do even at our houses all across of West Africa or even in East Africa. So we don't, although it's difficult to get out to the farm from time to time, um, we at least need to start um, doing some more stuff in our own backyard. So, so I'm really sorry. This conversation is kind of falling apart. There's a lot of things that I want to rediscuss. I'm going to leave this going for a little while. I got to get outside and get some food. I'm trying to heat it up, and I definitely do not want to burn it just trying to talk on the Internet here. It's very important that we actually do something about what we're talking about here uh, in terms of the front door and the back door of the jungle. So if you actually live in this region, I would love to hear from you about specifically what's going on. I had it unbelievable conversation i was afraid to talk to the guy he uh works on a farm uh and i won't tell you where but he called me i, I think i called him up and i was just desperate to say hey man what's going on in africa with the farming situation and i didn't want to disturb him at all because it's a very i live thousands and thousands of miles away from this person i did not want to disturb what he was doing because he was an expert farmer and i was afraid to talk with him um, hopefully he's not listening to this right now but anyway what I was suggesting is that it is almost I'm like we have invasive ideas like I'm a white person don't necessarily listen to me there's a lot of different ideas out there about how to farm and what the doorway of the jungle is um, as you can see it's not as simple as just what I'm making it out to be and the correct doorway is being very nice to the animals yes you can live near the jungle and do some great things to help the animals and that's actually the best solution is for us to work with the wildlife not necessarily you know but we're doing maybe not such a good job so uh anyway as you can see this gets um some interesting coastline um down in here and actually the temperature becomes less really humid um so it's actually really nice to live in some of these areas um, here um, and that's why a lot of people uh, live down here in South Africa because it's basically 70 degrees year-round similar to California and a lot of people live in North Africa as well um, completely avoiding and actually the wealthiest part of Africa is perhaps in North Africa so ironically 
the further you get from the jungle, you can actually be very wealthy and, and live a fantastic life. Um, but it's very nice to have great animals, so we absolutely need to think about the doorway here. And I'm really sorry, there's someone texting me right now. I gotta get away from my computer and check on my food. Thank you. So you're probably curious what I'm cooking right now. I'm cooking a soup and some wild rice. Um, it's some of the best wild rice that I've ever had. Anyway, I'm gonna try to pause this for a very long time here, and I'm sorry, I'll be back a little bit later. But think about the doorway, um, take a look at some of these maps. I'll try to post some of the links as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, so sorry, one more quick story. Um, I just got some food as quickly as possible, and that sounds terrible, but I wanted to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think about the wildlife here and just get back to this discussion. I talked with this farmer the other day, and I said, hey, not only did I ask them, well, about, you know, their farm, I didn't really ask him directly. I asked their, one of the kids, but here's the thing. I asked, I was like, well, so like, I would like to replant. I, I, I said, you know, I'd like to buy this apple here and, 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 you know, could I, could I please try to maybe plant it into a tree? And he tried to explain it to me about planting a, uh, uh, a tree and it really scared me because it essentially didn't make sense um, in the sense that like he was he was saying well you got to graft a branch you grow a separate thing and then you graft a branch onto the the root of the other tree so that you get exactly the same thing that you're trying to get from the other thing and then all your trees are the same and then I realized to myself <clears throat> yeah that's nice to get precisely the same tree but I thought to myself in detail that you know what's really nice is that you have a continuous root. Um, there's something that we've lost about a continuous root um, in the grafting process, um, as well as the diversity, right? Why should all the fruit be precisely the same? Um, and he even kind of scared me into thinking that the seed, and I'm holding this apple here for you, the actual apple that I talked to him about, he said that essentially the seeds are worthless, um, which is probably not true. Um, but the scary thing is that they're genetically modified and maybe they are actually worthless. Um, so there's really a scary question here um, about farming because essentially I didn't really know what I was talking about. He didn't really know what he's talking about. I don't know if there's any farmers that really know what they're doing right now. It's very terrifying. It was. It, this is the most, perhaps the most important fruit stand. There's like maybe at, at our entire farmer's market for the state, our state of Idaho is as large as a country. Um, and, then, and then further, the other night I was being threatened with some situations, but so I, I ran from my house over to the local grocery store because I was like, if I'm gonna die, might as well die at the grocery store. So I went to the grocery store, walked in. We have a funny thing in our state, we're the potato state. Potatoes are like what you grow if you're desperate as a farmer um, because there's there's like no, the soil's bad or some kind of problem, so you grow potatoes. Our state is called the potato state, but it's very prestigious because um, potatoes are French fries, and a lot of people love French fries. But you know what they did to the to the potatoes? They took the Idaho potatoes and put them in the corner of the store. It's most difficult, and there's flies swarming all over there. And I'm not angry with the flies. I love flies. At least the flies are getting the potatoes. But the point that I'm trying to make is that there was something very mysterious wrong here. We all go around saying that we are a farmer state and we are the potato state, but look at what they did. There's thousands of pounds of potatoes rotting at our local grocery store right now, uh, and we're the potato state. They put them in the corner of Winco. I was just like, what is going on here? And I looked at the quality of the potatoes, and I was like, oh, man, this doesn't, they looked like there was little spots on all the potatoes, and I was just like, they probably genetically made them so they're all the same, and now the same bug loves to get them because it's the same bug that likes the same type of potato so it's like one type of potato that they have i don't know something seems a little bit weird so um what i'm trying to say here is that you can really make a difference and i was um, so impressed with my friend that was farming 
um, very organized, extremely detailed African guy um, and helping um, hundreds of people and maybe even thousands of people um, just in his village um, with farming. So everyone can really make a huge difference here. I wasn't anticipating of studying the doorway of our important, most important jungle on our planet. Um, our only planet. This, we're not going anywhere else. I got to get going here, but man, this is a very important topic uh, in terms of the jungle, right? So if we get this doorway correct and we politely work with the jungle, um, both on farming and population, we can have an awesome life living with the animals and jungle. So I'm going to leave it this map here. I'm really sorry. I got to go for a walk. I have to listen to the earth. I'm sick of talking on the internet. I love uh, trying to work on the problem and help out, but I need to get outside and listen to earth because this is not good to sit here on the computer all day. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, so I wanted to uh, finish up this discussion or really um, begin the discussion uh, in terms of everything else and looking at more of the spiritual truth here. So uh, I have an image here of the city um, in Rwanda that is right on Lake Kivu. Um, I'll show you where that is in just a moment. So I really just wanted to thank uh, everyone that's really looking at the details here um, and really uh, rethink about how we can work together. Uh, on this right here we're kind of looking at a city called Lounda in Angola um, that is on the south side of the jungle um, that may be a safe alternative um, that is the traffic patterns there but what I'm going to do here is show you uh, some of the other details uh, really quickly so Kenasha uh, and uh, this other city just north is actually in a different country it's Brazzaville um, and you can see uh, that basically on the south side of this um, is really very important as well as the north side. So you can see that the Congo River heads all the way up here um, and actually kind of takes a sharp turn down back to the south side again. Um, so if you're not familiar with uh, the Congo, you really need to understand this aspect um, of the Congo just as a beginning concept. Um, but really um, how that works. So you can kind of see on the uh, river map, and I'll zoom in here uh, to kind of show you some more details, but this city, Kanasha, um, is a super populated city of many millions of people um, right here at the junction. So you can kind of see, um, if we zoom in here, you can see uh, how this Congo River works. Um, it actually makes it a little more complicated to see, but there's basically this whole region um, here um, that is the uh, basin or the water basin. Um, so I have the hydrological basins here on the map as well. So, um, but again, uh, there's really practical details. Um, some of uh, one of my friends in particular uh, lives over here, um, several actually, but, um, you know, and, and this actually is where it starts. So if, if you look at the details here, you'll notice that um, these river systems kind of pull in uh, from the south side of uh, the Lake Victoria and pull in around. So it's kind of the opposite of what you might expect. There is another river, separate river system. You can see the basin here. Uh, kind of heading off into this area um, and it gets more and more remote as you head down south so there's basically if you look at the population structure of this whole region um, you can see it's kind of loading there's actually a lot of population over on this side on the back door of the jungle um, so uh, first of all we're going to go through a lot of images here but this is uh, the city on Lake Kivu, which I didn't even explain because there's so many details, but we're basically talking about this city right in here. And there's so basically that's a very pivotal city uh, because if you look at the details here, you can see there's two pathways heading into the deepest part of the jungle. So we're basically looking at this back door side here, and this is the most vital side um, 
basically deepest in the jungle so it's actually it's actually quicker to get into the jungle from this back door in some senses um, because there's so many people that live there as well as on the west african side here is La lagos um, but uh, again i wanted to be very thankful here for the help um, and just emphasize that even one person can make a huge difference in understanding and helping here um, and we really need to focus on what each of us can do personally um, to help out. Um, this is probably going to have uh, some impact on how we think about the jungle. Hopefully uh, we can rethink about that, but you can see um, some other things. So let's focus here for a moment and go through these images that I've uh, looked at carefully. Um, so the geology is very interesting because you can see uh, this pink rock here is called ingenious igneous rock. Um, actually, and it's it's actually very hard rock. Uh, sometimes you can get granite and some other special minerals and gemstones. Um, so as you know, Africa uh, does have a lot of the world's supply of diamonds. Um, and this is a very peculiar thing because you can see the front part of the jungle actually has this hard uh, side. So the door is actually very much biased towards uh, this special type of rock, uh, both the front side and the back side. And you can see there's kind of a different, even a weird area right here in South Africa. Uh, and there's a huge population here in Johannesburg. Um, and it's actually very high tech and technological uh, actually in uh, Lagos uh, here in South Africa, uh, particularly Cape Town, and also Kenya has a huge tech scene as well. So um, but so there's actually um, quite a lot going on outside of the jungle. Um, now here you can kind of see what I diagrammed out showing uh, this back door, well, this is the front door, excuse me, um, where you're basically coming in from the Lagos side. Um, over here, uh, kind of uh, some beaches, and then you have uh, this Mount Cameroon, the second tallest mountain in all of Africa, um, as well as another kind of side pathway. Um, and I'm kind of labeling this uh, as the white door uh, from the front door, um, and hopefully to be a little bit humorous. But um, you can see that there's basically these weird geological regions where these fault lines uh, and different types of geology kind of converge on this front side. And you can see um, basically there's these three islands here that kind of point into this very mysterious uh, tall mountain. And there's actually that little pocket as well as this geological region kind of getting in around that side as well. So the soil map uh, gives you some ideas as well. And again, uh, you know, wherever you're living here um, in Africa or even outside of Africa, you know, in Europe, uh, for instance, uh, I, I was explaining to one of my friends, uh, we depend in the United States on Mexico in the wintertime for our fruits. And to a large extent, uh, you know, the world depends on Africa for chocolate. You know, 60% of the chocolate comes from Af like West Africa area. So you can see Europe is basically the same time zone similar to in the United States where Latin America is the same time zone. Um, so it's uh, actually um, very likely that a lot of the food, uh, that some of the problems can be alleviated uh, even in Europe. So, uh, but let me see if I explain this right. So the back side of this is actually very complicated as well. And I divide that up into a mysterious part this chunk here, it doesn't look exactly the same as the other geological map, but you can see here, if I zoom out, uh, it starts to show that same uh, side here with a little hole in here, um, but actually you start to see how important this East African chunk is heading all the way south. Um, and actually, uh, even into the Middle East here, you can see uh, that as well. So the soil map, um, now this is actually similar soil map to like Florida. So you're basically talking about very good quality soil in the orange. If I brought this over to the United States uh, or Europe, you can see the Amazon jungle has a lot of that same forest, but it actually turns to an entirely different type of soil. Um, and actually only a small part of the United States has this kind of quality s soil that the uh, jungle has. So, uh, and certainly Europe is actually really bad on soil comparison. Um, but uh, 
you can see here, um, basically, that's one of the problems because the farming land is so good. So a lot of people have farmed here, but what we've been suggesting is actually some farmland right on here. And even here, actually, it becomes uh, interesting. So again, this is the uh, map here that you can see for the geology. Um, and you can see how different the center piece is and actually uh, it, there's actually a pocket right down in here. Um, but this gets very dry, so it doesn't quite explain it. That's why you need the soil map. Um, so this is actually all sand up in here and it actually gets to almost to be sand uh, quite quickly um, right into the jungle. And you just see that that does not happen in the Amazon. You can see it quite goes further south and actually there's a lot of farming down into that region. Um, so, but basically what I wanted to point out is there is these, uh, and this is actually kind of continuous through here, and there's actually a pocket here, so maybe I even should have done it like this, uh, with a pocket like this, kind of going out like that. So, that's maybe a different way to look at it with this pocket coming in here. So, uh, but I wanted to also emphasize the soil, so I put uh, kind of three sides, one side north of the Congo jungle, one side south, and then kind of heading into here. And this actually could have been all out to here. So the reason I didn't do that is because there's actually a pocket right in this back door region here that is starting to be heavily farmed. Um, and this brings us right into the center of the jungle. And once you farm here, you can float down the river and pretty much the whole region becomes uh, very, uh, questionable because you start having these pockets in here where you see uh, there's definitely de deforestation in the very center of the jungle, essentially caused all the way back from Uganda here. So uh, so that's, uh, anyway, I'm really sorry the way I'm explaining this, but I'm trying to go through this as carefully and as quickly as possible to get everyone knowledgeable about this. So here I really wanted to look at something interesting. Uh, because it's hard to explain this, but this portion of West Africa is actually very vital. Um, there's a lot of habitat right there, um, very far from the jungle. So, And that's because a lot of the hurricanes are generated off the coast here, and there's a tremendous amount of rain and energy coming off the coast of Africa. Uh, this is partly due to the trade winds and the temperature along the equator meeting the cold of the ocean. Um, and then creating clouds and a uh, really important climate here. Um, and you can see there's actually a pocket right in here as well. So, and there's special pockets right here and here. So this all makes for a very interesting doorway um, into the jungle because you basically change um, as you move across here. So uh, hopefully I'm explaining that well. And I didn't even wanna, I wanted to emphasize how actually very important Madagascar is in this whole discussion. And I'm really sorry about this discussion because we need to start thinking about it as real animals and real people's lives living all around here. So, um, you know, it's just really kind of scary when you think about how much uh, everything on earth has changed. In the United States, they've farmed everything out. So if I move this map here, you see the jungle has been very heavily farmed here but in the united states it's almost all everything has been taken um and even in here um this map is not probably correct so uh but basically uh there's a lot of deforestation uh all throughout here so but how do we really connect with the animals and and that's one of the real questions here and and we don't want to necessarily get into a war over this um you know there is some wars going on uh, in some of these regions right now, um, I've looked at some uh, pretty scary long-term problems. Um, but really, it's nice to live next to the animals. It's nice to have like a friendly, you know, be friendly with all the animals. But um, it's just really uh, the farmland and the combination of the heavy population. So again, let's look at how serious that population is right in here. So you can just see the millions we're talking about a billion people right um pretty much uh, in this region so uh and actually uh, i think it's 1.2 billion billion so uh again you can kind of see yes uh you might not live right in like kampala is a really centralized city here in the whole discussion of the back door so 
let's get back to the diagrams really quick. So this is a farming diagram, and you can see that actually it all starts right over here in Senegal, and it basically just spins off into the jungle. And you can see there's kind of a gap in the Central African Republic. And so that's one of the good reasons to have a country here is it protects the jungle and they actually created Congo here as well as the Democratic Republic of Congo and you can see South Sudan and they're actually been working on that to protect the jungle and that's why Sudan used to be the biggest country in all of Africa and they divided it in half and then now it kind of protects these are kind of the protectors of the jungle but actually Uganda should have been a very vital part of that and Rwanda and even there's a kind of a missing piece right in here in Tan Tanzania. So Tanzania is actually very vital for that. And then you can see uh, Zambia and Angola. So, but actually Angola is a very vital part. And you can see this farmland kind of starting up here as well as here. And certainly if you can farm here, you can farm there um, more. So they don't necessarily have to be farming right here in the jungle. So, um, and I can kind of explain uh, some details. So basically this is the front door kind of question a lot of people have tried to come in through cameroon and then come down the coast and then again pulled into the jungle through this way uh kind of uh on the northern part kind of bypassing angola um when in fact they could have uh actually easily just moved all of this farming into angola if angola were to work better with the democratic republic congo um, they could work on immigration and basically shift this even to Zambia as well as Angola. So, uh, and all of this should probably be moved to Tanzania and just completely reforested and redone. And these should be entirely focused on the back door of the jungle. Um, and right now the animals have been terrified uh, from the diagrams I've seen. They've been scared out of this region entirely and pushed down to this actually these part these other further lakes and now you can even see the farming coming in there um so this is a really important diagram the dog is just howling next door um out of pain you can hear him but uh but basically uh this farming map uh is very important to look at you can zoom in carefully and start to see and it's going to load this in but every single little detail about how this works basically starts to influence things and it converges all on these very mysterious lakes right here so um and again this has to do with you know friendships discussing this properly and just being nice to each other about what we're trying to do here so what i wanted to do is emphasize that the front door of the jungle really the congo jungle is actually divided into two major parts we have this section in here well the the african jungle uh, as we know it is basically split this does not happen and that's because of the rain patterns we basically have a huge amount of rain a lot of people don't talk about it but actually this is the jungle is actually gets no rain in the democratic republic this is zero rain whereas this is a full meter so really these areas need to be protected this coastline is very vital um, land uh, in the discussion of the jungle and you can see actually during the winter months uh, it shifts down to east africa so this becomes really a great lake region and right in here this all should be very protected um, i circled that in red and even this is very important part of the discussion because animals it shouldn't just be coastline for people if we just entirely surround the jungle and animals like to go down the river they like to go to the ocean and even a lot of fish depend on habitat in both salt water and fresh water for example if you eat salmon i don't eat any fish um anymore i'm a vegetarian but um basically these little pockets are very important and even this little pocket down here you can see uh, actually is very important and you can see a spot here as well as a spot here in angola and this can be used as a lesson to learn but this is nothing like what we're seeing in west africa so as we look at this discussion it's very important to look at here and i and i try to outline some hopeful areas for farming right we got all this other land that we can do we don't have to do this we can do all this other stuff around here and believe it or not even in the sand desert in saudi arabia they've pretty much farmed in regions that you would say are unbelievably impossible to farm so definitely um it's wise to look at some other opportunities um and 
really uh, what we're looking at, it, this actually shrinks down the Angola size quite a bit. Um, you can see because of the difference in the, uh, what do you call it, the water basin. So you can see Botswana and it actually means that there's actually a backside of this. And the nice part about this river is it actually flows the outside of the jungle. So what that means is that people are naturally not going to um, and you can see here, uh, this is the Congo jungle, but then in Angola, there's a backside where this actually starts to flood down into this way, which is actually Mozambique. Uh, and there is some farming possibilities all along the coast here. But again, we got to be careful because the animals actually need this, this little river right in through here on this side may be very important to protect as I was mentioning um, in the other diagram. But so again there's so many awesome people to work with and um really it takes uh working with people that actually live here and not necessarily this discussion at all so this is just to try to help out in understanding and you can see lagos here what happened is that they moved the capital um to abuja so this is uh basically what they done and you can see on the farming maps that this is where they do most of the farming in West Africa. It's kind of unbelievable um, if you're not familiar with it, but on the farming side, you can see that this is actually where the farming is done. So if you look at Lagos, uh, they pulled the farming pretty much out into here. And then as a result, that's very wise for Nigeria to do that. But again, people are trying to farm through. The farming is so good in that region and as well as you can see out here and this becomes almost sand so you can see senegal is actually probably the wisest farming in all of africa because it's furthest from the jungle it's also near the sand area and they're doing quite a lot of farming and you can see also here Mali is doing a great job um in the farming region as well because they don't you know and, and obviously this coastline liberia sierra leone Guinea and this guy right here all need to reconsider the coastline um, as vital habitat for the wildlife. So that becomes a very confrontational discussion um, because a lot of people would like to vacation and check out these regions, but actually it should probably be preserved as habitat. And you can see they tried to do it by climate um, because in that picture there, let's see if I can get an image. So you can see um, that the pocket right here in Sierra Leone, and my grandfather actually tried to do missionary work in this country, unbelievably. Um, but it's actually a, a um, really educational region. So this could be the um, best place to really go to school and learn about the jungle because sometimes actually being in the jungle and going to school um, at one of these universities, uh, even like Rwanda or wherever else, it may actually be wiser um, to go here or even in Douala, which is actually very close. But <clears throat> um, again, um, what's anyways, so uh, the monkeys and the wildlife from what I'm reading about um, essentially have, um, man, it's like they only have a small little habitat here and then on the back side of the jungle. So <clears throat> they've actually repopulated uh, the gorilla population. So I'm not explaining it well enough, but essentially what's going on here is that this Delta region is very heavily populated um, with people. And that's right here. And you can see kind of on the map that there's a river that comes in through here. Um, and that river actually goes all the way into Mali. So it pulls in through here and there's a separate channel off into here. It's not uh, super visible on this map, but we can try to see it. So you can see how vast and that river just goes up through here and then the backside. So what's happening is that people are following the river up this way and kind of finding a sneaky way back door into the jungle there. So, well, this is front door, but whatever. So, um, yeah, and uh, uh, so I really diagrammed this out because I wanted to show what's going on here, right? Once they leave Nigeria, that a lot of people try to go immediately right into the jungle and they say they, they stop and then they start to come back out again and then they come back in again. So, and you can see that actually Dawala and this other city, this city is actually the one that's really starting to get deeper into the jungle and is actually even bigger um, than Dawala. So a lot of people may actually prefer living here and that's probably because of farming. 
Um, so that explains a little bit of that. Now here's directly in the jungle and you can see there's just a huge population of quite a number of cities with this main city right here. Um, and this is Kanasha and you can actually see this on a satellite imagery uh, very visibly so we'll talk about that so basically uh, this is what this whole discussion was about right so we basically have this front door and then we have a weird back door that includes Madagascar and I'm really sorry to talk about this the police are coming in here and you know we need help uh, to really look at this details uh, from Africa so um, and really, if you live on the West African side, it all starts in Lagos uh, right in here. So that's really the responsibility heavily uh, is right in here um, with uh, Lagos. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's just there's just a lot of um, really important uh, and this actually goes out to Accra as well. So Douala, by the time you get to Douala, in Cameroon, you're almost in the in the jungle. So, basically, at that point, um, you have to be extremely cautious about what's going on. So, all these cities along here, and these are actually some of the wealthiest uh, cities in Africa, are actually right on this door. So, um, and that's one of the really big problems because uh, it's not necessarily the wealthiest, but you can go to North Africa and South Africa and other areas. So. And there's a really important question about the Nile because the Nile actually heads all the way up. Um, let's try to get an image of that really quick so you can see. So if you look, take a step back here, you start to see, let me turn off the uh, basin so it's a little bit more clear. So now this is just the rivers. So you start to see that this door is actually a very complicated door. It's the Nile River. And there's that other major river we talked about here, and you can see the Congo River itself. Now, obviously, this Nile is many thousands of miles, and it actually heads into Sudan. Um, and this is the original kind of white door, as you would say, but actually it really extends all the way across here. Um, and it's pretty complicated because the front door actually becomes this little river here, which actually pulls in back into the deep part of the Congo River because the Congo River heads north and then back down again. So... Uh, Anyway, this is a very important discussion that I want to have separately, hopefully, because we really need to work on uh, more of the astrophysics of what's going on together with Africans. So there was a major earthquake that just happened last week, killing thousands of people. Uh, it was like a 7.0 or even an 8.5 uh, located at the heart of it uh, right in Morocco. And that was near a major... Um, astronomical observatory so as you can see this declination field line actually comes through the northern part of africa and then heads down through dewala down here and then into the main part of the jungle so it actually heads relatively south but this my feeling is over the years this probably oscillates north and south so we basically have this u line and then a v line through here but this probably oscillates back and up and down and then basically the cloud patterns may actually have gone quite far south and quite far north. So if you look at the soil, it's probably, the field line probably runs down through here um, and, and heads back up again. So this creates some of the geological uh, structure uh, of the planet. So um, where are we here? Sorry about this. So again, um, we gotta start thinking about how this relates to even further away so what i outlined here and i didn't really even circle the amazon and i probably should have pulled in right in here the importance of everything but it was hard for me to circle this because of a particular reason so what i wanted to emphasize is that africa uh really is connected over here to mumbai and so india completely wiped out their jungle and has completely deforested everything so basically that responsibility pulls in through here and actually comes in through the back door so india is actually responsible in part to that back door because of both population um and uh just this declination field line and then you can see 
um, that you're basically starting to talk about all these islands here and this basically becomes a oceanography question right so you're starting to talk about the jungle here and then by the time you get to India you're starting to get into oceanography where the fish are actually affected um, by what is going on so here I definitely circled this um, and what has essentially happened is that um, this is now becoming the capital of Indonesia they're moving it from Jakarta over to here and this is the main forest of this whole region is on this island so that's pretty much X'd out of the picture now because that's going to be populated and almost entirely farmed out leaving the far islands as the only hope for the jungle here as well as Madagascar and so I wanted to circle Madagascar here as well as this region here in Brazil so it's almost like the jungle is being pushed um, out of the jungle there on that field line so and here you can see on the inclination field you basically have the the uh, end of the Amazon which is this real Macapa Brazil and there's a couple major cities in Brazil the field line basically comes up through Dakar and that's where we saw that major rain if you remember we saw all this rain pulling in right through there as that inclination field line pulls and you can see it pulls right through the center here um, and a lot of the clouds find it easy going to go along this pathway so um, and then here's the change in that inclination you can kind of see it definitely being centered around East Africa and then this this zero line so it's actually the, the big changes uh, although this zero this zero line actually may not be is actually kind of the bad thing right because you don't have a lot of energy or fields changing in those regions um, so actually this middle part of the jungle right here in the front door is actually um, it, it's 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 different than you might expect um, so you can see actually India and East Africa and this is how we started to connect the Indian portion with the East African portion uh, as you can see it also even almost hits down to Singapore um, in this whole region and you can see a separate tip right in there so and as well as this kind of being uh, more focused on the far islands uh, in terms of the inclination field change so this is going uh, more in or more out um, on the field line so actually this would be very important uh, you can see of a less of a focus essentially uh, on the field pulling in or out of the earth um, actually the so the the Amazon and this region actually being very important so here is the quick study of the roads so why did I do this is because uh, traffic is very important um, people driving to and from work or bringing food uh, from a farm outside the city and particularly looking at that channel from into the jungle so if you're not familiar with what I was trying to do here this is Lagos and I basically looked at the west or east side of Lagos and up into here so this channel actually may be quite legit so I maybe shouldn't have circled that but actually this actually should be higher faster traffic like we really want fast traffic here and this is a, actually it's just all a beach anyway why do we we should be cautious because if you're heading out into the jungle this is a lagoon here so it's not super bad but um, but essentially if you look at here zoom in on Lego so this all is okay but you can kind of see the road structure here um, and heading out into the jungle so right here actually this city being very vital as a first point so you see the climate changing here as well as uh, and this actually gets into that Delta region so this is a heavily populated region of Nigeria and you can see this river all of a sudden changing everything um, and they're actually having to go up through here so actually uh, it's actually in this city so anyway so this becomes the actual front door of the city here and once you get into Dawala you're basically talking right into the jungle and this city right here is extremely important because the climate is heavily rained there so we can basically start to say um, that's actually probably one of the most important ones I should have looked at more carefully but um, again you know I, I just circled this this is actually completely it's it's good to live out in these regions um, and things like that but it was interesting traffic to think about because of it heading towards the jungle and then and then here's Dawala you can kind of see probably definitely should have circled uh, this area here 
as well as this one right in here um, just as heading out over into the jungle area so Dewala is probably the most important case study of these uh, that we can look at um, so and then Libreville this is another one right on the coast um, and you can see um, we're actually getting right down into here so uh, or where are we yeah here it is so this one being right on this side so there's actually a bunch of cities right in here and this all heads you can see um, how these roads work and it's actually so dense the forest that they don't actually have a road here thank god so this we really want to make sure that uh it actually these points right in here and it's particularly this city uh right here is actually very much responsible for what's happening um as well as this guy right here right you can see they just pretty much stopped the road right there when the climate became heavily rain or just a uh, heavy jungle but you can see the roads actually cross exactly across the jungle and this is not the full road picture at all um but you can see here now we're starting to get into the congo river region um so this is all very important stuff uh to look at um and you know essentially what we need to propose here is definitely keeping the roads out of this red zone here and focusing on and even giving that quite a little uh you know several hundred miles even would be great to get um so you just don't have any roads there um, and focus on preserving that habitat particularly around this lake and let me zoom out because it's probably you're not really even sure where you are at this point so Again, we're basically looking at this part of the jungle. This is heavy part of the jungle, and yet we got roads pretty much going right in into these regions. So you can see right there, it's basically this is the heart of the jungle, and we have major highways, and there's even a train system heading there. And you can see it's kind of as a result of this city. And although they're on the edge, and and this dog is barking like crazy, and I'm thankful for it, but what I want to emphasize here is that these habitats, it's important to have these multiple colors, so it's not just, yeah, we're going to farm or build cities all the way into here. We actually need to take it all the way back to here so that different types of species require different habitats, um, and that becomes even more important on the back door because you can see it fast. It really quickly changes because there's a mountain range here and it just changes into a totally different habitat, meaning Kampala really starts that whole discussion. So just like what we have in West Africa, where we have this whole region here, uh, we basically have Kampala on the back door having almost a separate jungle in itself, and they've entirely farmed this out. So what Kampala can do, you know, it's becoming a vast city here, and really they have to look at this uh western and it's not even it becomes part of rwanda here at this point so and this is even kenya so uh, uganda does have a a way to farm in the northern part here um we discussed even having a major rice farm perhaps the world's largest rice farming area right here in uganda um they could produce more rice than everywhere it would be an unbelievable amount of rice um and that way they could just try to get this out of the region so probably there's a lot of insects and some other things and there's also a lot of conflict and that's partly due to the uh food situation right um so uh, anyway the wildlife question is really important so you know it, it, it's just um you know I, i'm gonna zoom in here to show you this again um the roads so there's a ton of roads right in the jungle so let's just start at that point right and further it's not just the roads we're talking about major deforestation all in here uh, and this is not even the right map i should I, I don't know how to change i should change this later but uh, i don't, don't want to mess this up right now so but basically the deforestation is even worse than what is showing in this map so um and you can see ethiopia entirely farmed out in here um as well so Basically, it becomes a huge responsibility for Uganda uh, to kind of look at that back door uh, because they're at the center of this in terms of the population, right? So you see that this is the largest city and even Nairobi uh, and Dar es Salaam. So Dar es Salaam is actually the solution. All of this can be solved by these guys right here, um, pulling everyone out. And basically you get, why would you want to live out here when you can live on the beach? 
uh, and actually this is a very wealthy place called Zanzibar. You have Mombasa here. It's just insane the amount of growth in Nairobi when you can live right on the beach. It doesn't make sense. So it's basically because of farming. They need food and, and that's the key. So, um, but in the United States, you know, there's very few farmers. But anyway, so Africa has some great things because there's a lot of farmers. Everyone's farming in Africa, right? So anyway, uh, so again, going back to this, this is Libreville on the jungle side. And then a couple more cities to look at. This is perhaps the most important city to look at in terms of traffic. Well, let's not say most important, but very important. Um, because it's right on the Congo River, uh, you can see... Kenosha, you can kind of see it's a very weird, mysterious city. You see a little island here um, and some things. It doesn't really show very good on this map. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm going to zoom out just to give you the big picture again uh, so you don't get completely confused. Um, but basically, we're looking at... So the weird thing is that it's actually this weird way through here, actually, even though... Can, so it's... Uh, but the problem is you have to have all this habitat, so you need to reserve everything here has to be reserved um you're only talking about like a few miles i mean you, you can't have life and existence these these animals depend on a large amount of space because it's not just a few miles like you can't just be living it's you know you have to have a big space so um and anyway so what what i'm saying is this city is very important because it's along the congo river and a lot of the responsibility is along the rivers so and this is an alternative so you don't have to live in the jungle and again the two big important questions that i was suggesting here is dar es salaam can really solve this problem and lawunda can really solve this problem you don't have to live right here might as well live on the ocean front the problem is it's a different country you may have to do passports all kinds of things and it just changes everything so but uh, the farming is also very good in this region too. So um, that's why I showed it. Now you can see it's very dry here, but there's very green spots back in here as well. So um, anyway, um, Goma is a very interesting case. It's actually probably a very dangerous city because it's right on the back door of the jungle. And you can see in Rwanda, this is where you start to get into the deepest part of the jungle. These guys right here, are essentially right heading into this city right here the other responsibility is on the south side of kivu which is basically heading out into here and here and actually all this originated from kenosha which we just looked at right so it's actually they're not actually going up the congo river they go south side because the roads this is a swamp you can't build a road on the swamp so they've basically built those roads just south of here and then this has all become populated and it's actually even connected into here which comes around through there so very sorry to talk about all these details um but there's just so much more and, and uganda is actually key in the whole discussion remember because of the population map like let's just look at that really quick again so you can see what we're talking about right so this is kampala and we're basically looking at the roads heading out of kampala into this other side and you can see um, probably there's three main roads. There's a south one, middle, and then kind of a north one, and even one heading up here. So these roads are probably helping on the farming side, right? These are actually being going into the jungle eventually. So, and why even do that? Why head out these ways when you can basically live right on the coast? Um, and even uh, Nairobi, there's a lot of good hope on this side of the river. So the problem is, is that this is great farmland here. And a friend of mine lives down here, and I've been trying to help him uh, financially as well as we've been talking, uh, you know, as much as possible about what we can do. They're even starving for food down here, but um, this farmland here is actually very vital um, because it's pulling, at least it's not farming right into the back door. Because every time you farm here, it means people try to push further and further in. So uh, basically, Kampala has these certain key intersections right in here and this is actually very close to downtown uh maybe a few miles so you can already start to see that traffic influencing what's going on so this whole western side of kampala and basically my friend told me he's like well i was like well where would be a good place to go in kampala and he said jinja would be awesome and jinja is actually on this side so 
it's actually the start of the Nile River. So if you look at the map here and you're trying to do business in Africa, what you notice is that, well, okay, so the uh, that river system, this is the Nile, and I'm sorry it's loading so slowly here, but this is Jinja right here, and this is Kampala. Kampala is actually kind of uh, further away, so you see G-I-N-J-A. So Jinja actually heads up through, there's, uh, I saw some really cool pictures from my friend, he's a pastor, and he took a boat, like a really small, like, it was a canoe with an engine on it. They did a canoe with an engine and they kind of went up through here on the Nile and went on a little uh, discovery to see what the food situation was and also the spiritual situation. And I am not explaining this enough on the spiritual side and I'm really sorry about that. But hopefully um, we'll leave the spiritual stuff to personal uh, understandings. So the, the, all of this could be farmed over here. It doesn't need to be right in here. So what, what I'm basically explaining is this this river right here, all is the back door and, and it's just pushing. You can see again, look at the population. It is definitely crossed over the line of the mountain range and definitely uh, pushing right into the jungle. So again, Kampala is perhaps that big key on the back door here. And I wanted to look at Accra as a really interesting alternative. So let's just look at the main map again. I'm sorry about this. Uh, so again, I'm gonna zoom out really quick here and just give you the overall picture, right? So Accra is way over here. So we basically talked about a couple key cities. Accra being a really nice city because it's far away from the jungle not really disturbing the habitat like the other places as well as we talked about the city La Onda down here and Dar es Salaam right so uh, and basically uh, that being very wise points um, and there's definitely farmland that you don't have to farm right in the jungle as they're already doing you can farm all in this region um, <laughs> very successfully uh, this is a far better farmland than they have in the United States um, and most parts of the world actually so uh, there's no excuse of why we have to farm right in the jungle so um and on the city map you can see uh they're basically lighting up the front door here and the back door is actually very not really lit and as we looked on the geology map johannesburg is an unbelievably important city to know about and that's because of the mining so there's a lot of mining going on and a lot of this light is actually from mining companies and you can see they actually are trying to work on things, but you can see right in here, this whole kind of area really, um, you know, start, this is really where we see the main part of the problem, right? Is all these cities right here, um, because that little sliver of the jungle becomes vital, right? We're basically talking about right in here, and that's the only habitat. We actually need to cut this out and kind of really watch that carefully uh, all in that region. So, man, uh, Anyway, so let's go back uh, to square one here um, and look at this map just for a second. And I wanted to thank everyone that's really looking at this carefully. And the unbelievable part about these whole maps is that anywhere you are in the world, we are connected um, spiritually and logically um, in a matter of seconds. We can send emails, we can talk with people, and we can work together on what we're doing here and helping each other out. So. Uh, and I just want to emphasize um, that. So, uh, and I probably should have circled the separate little section in here, and I didn't really do that. But that's there's a separate little uh, jungle area there, right? So, because of uh, this section right there. So, basically, and this is kind of weird here too. So, what you might not expect. And I actually left it completely out of the picture. But this is such an important, Madagascar is perhaps the most, it's one of the poorest countries in the world. And as soon as this becomes popular, we basically should only probably live in the northern part of this and that's it. And leave the entire, everything else completely to uh, wildlife, right? So we have that ability to do that right now and um, we could probably do that. And, and, and it's just, um, yeah, because you can see the rain is actually right along the coast here. Um, and it's just very wise to reserve uh, that. And this is actually becomes a great little beach town. Uh, you can get boats in here um, and a lot of uh, nice things. I'm actually uh, very interested in that area. So 
Um, but again, you see from the climate. So there's actually there's actually like I don't know, hundreds or even thousands of different varieties of monkeys uh, that live just in Madagascar. They're a different type of monkey here for sure. They're, like it's hard to explain. I looked at a book of monkeys, and there's like like very different types of monkeys. Uh, it's not all the same at all. They look very different, and they all live in very specific regions. And it's scary. There's like 300 or even a few hundred left of some species, um, and Madagascar is very vital on that um, uh, whole question. So, um, but uh, I, don't, I don't even I don't I don't want to end this discussion. But I need to end this discussion because we need to get do some other things. I wish I could just go on and on about how important everything is here and and just thank people just for hours uh about how great um you know all these people have been working on this you know and, and africa is a really cool place um to uh work on all these kind of things so we don't i mean i in my town let's 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 face the truth some guy some guy actually even made fun of me. I'm a little bit upset about that. But we have like one bird, maybe that's all I see every day. We're talking about 1,209 or so species per square mile. So you have 1,209. I only see like one bird, maybe, um, you know, like a, we're like lucky to get even a blackbird. And I'm really thankful. Like it's really funny. They're supposed to be very nice birds as pets. Um, but, uh, my brother's wife's has one um but uh what i'm saying is that they're very fortunate here in the wildlife section um and they really have a responsibility to keep track of things and careful thing and and it's kind of ironic because we have absolutely no wildlife in the united states um at least the vast majority of the united states um except for maybe florida and louisiana for instance um but uh there are some things here. So, man, if you're thinking about this, that's awesome. I'm really thankful that you're working on it. Um, go through, try to take a look at um, all these different maps and discussions. I'll try to post some links here, um, and you can just see uh, the beauty of everything that we're trying to look at here um, and study the farmland, and you can basically look at all these maps in great detail. Um, and I hope you have some fun times making friends with some people and looking at you know like once you study all this you can start to figure out um, what needs to be done um, on working and making friends with people and i've learned so much i i, I can't thank people enough in africa uh, for helping me out understand what they're going through whether they're struggling for this or that um, and just trying to understand it they're so fun uh, to talk with and very nice everyone's been so friendly um, and it's been very interesting uh, to uh, learn about all this. So, uh, and if there's anything else, uh, definitely, definitely let me know. I, I would like to, I would like to know what you think about what you're trying to do uh, in looking at this this question of Africa, right? Um, and uh, please, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, I'll try to. I'll try to zoom out here, um, but yeah, let's, let's, uh, okay, thank you so much, see you later. And I'd just like to uh, spiritually um, say, please try to, um, you know, really pray for the animals and the wildlife here, that's what we're really trying to do, we're trying to make some, uh, you know, really uh, help out uh, in the jungle here, and really uh, preserve this for thousands of years, um, and make sure that we really have a really awesome and great jungle, um, and, uh, you know, work with people even if they're really struggling in the jungle and maybe even uh, having some problems, what we can do to help out and learn from everyone's experiences. Thank you so much. I'm really thankful to be able to look at this with you. Um, please let me know what you're doing. Thank you so much.